This is amazing. I must be dreaming. <laughs> Hi everyone. Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review. Moonface, Heartbreaking Bravery. This is the third release to come out of this Montreal-based, yes, Montreal, not just saying Canada, I promised the Canadians I would get specific. And if you really look at the, the buzz, or, or the lack thereof, or the t -t 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 talk kind of surrounding this project, it's, it's not really taking off that well. There's kind of been an aura of, of failure surrounding Moonface since it came out of the gate. And it's something that I think Spencer himself kind of puts onto the project. Just take the titling of the first EP, for example, the Dreamland EP, Marimba and, and Shit Drums. Or take the titling of the debut album, Organ Music, Not Vibraphone Like I'd Hoped. I feel like both of the two releases that Moonface started out with kind of imply that, yeah, this is my music, but it's not really the music I want to be making. But that doesn't really seem to be the case with this new LP. Telling just from the lack of self-loathing in the song titles and album title, and from the fact that Spencer is not just going solo this time around, he's working with a full band, actually a Finnish band by the name of Sinai. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Point being, I think Spencer may be making music he wants to make this time around. And I'll be honest, I did not enjoy those two previous Moonface releases. Definitely not as much as I'm enjoying this, and I think even Spencer himself would not blame me for it. For me, being a guy that's enjoyed Spencer Krug's songwriting for, for a handful of years now, it's great to hear him kind of in front of a full band again. Especially since a lot of stuff for Spencer kind of seems to be in limbo right now. This project has not exactly started off very well, and the two indie darling bands that brought him to where he is today are in the midst of an indefinite hiatus right now. And there's really no sign of them, being Sunset Rubdown and, and Wolf Parade, coming back anytime soon. And if you read into the very personal lyrics that Spencer has written for this album, and, and really just take them for face value, I'd say Spencer just went through a pretty ugly breakup, which is sad, but in a way I kind of feel like this has revitalized what Spencer is doing with his music, because he really is one of those singer-songwriters that has a very unique voice, lots of character, lots of vibrato, and his songs and his very emotional vocal delivery kind of thrives off of, off of sadness and will also draw his songs out musically in really interesting ways that kind of sidestep your, your average verse, chorus, verse structure. Usually a Spencer Krug track requires a few extra listens to really get into the meat of it, and I guess on some level understand it, but he's still not beyond writing a track that kind of hooks me on first listen. A track that, that comes to mind is the song Paper Lace, which was on that Swan Lake album, Enemy Mine, and appeared on that last Sunset Rubdown LP too. And now, as far as the sound goes on this thing, it does not, at first, on the surface, appear to be all that much different than your average album that, that Spencer is involved with. Spencer's voice sounds just as emotional as ever, sort of bordering on being kind of over the top. There's just a perfect splash of reverb on there. There's lots of airy synthesizers, shimmering guitars, drums that have quite a bit of ambience on them, not a lot of punch, more atmosphere. And Sinai, from what I understand, is, is more of an instrumental group with huge influences coming from the world of kraut rock. And that does show up on a few tracks here. Tracks like Teary Eyes and Bloody Lips and, and Shitty City both have very driving rhythms, strong synthesizers, very electronic textures to the effects surrounding those songs. But most of what's on this LP kind of feels like the band conforming to Spencer's songwriting, which, which could, 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 could be a good thing for the fans. I guess if there is a notable change because of the subject matter of this album, the drama 
seems to be turned up a little bit more than usual in a good way. It's like Spencer really wanted the emotions on this album to feel really grandiose with these great large movements and, and fireworks style explosions of sound. Like the opener, which is also the title track, it starts off with these sparse piano chords, very repetitive floor tom, drum beat, some bouncy reverb, but it eventually just blows up into these glistening keyboards. Of course, Spencer is singing throughout the track and his lyrics are a focal point as usual. He's kind of telling the story of, of how, to me, from, from what I interpret, he is not the bloodthirsty carnivore that his partner needs him to be in order to stay interested. And over the hook, Spencer starts talking about the kill, the, the prey, if you will. And it turns out that this person who, who he's with romantically is, in fact, the kill. Kind of unsettling. The second track goes for something really grand too, the these piano chords. Da, 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 da. There's just something so perfectly theatrical about those chords and they just kind of remind me of, of a wedding or something but then a fire breaks out and everybody needs to rush out all at once which is a, a terrible horrifying thought. But that's kind of the juxtaposition that you're getting with, with a lot of tracks on this album. You have this element of love, this element of, of prettiness, of beauty, but then comes the, the hatred and, and the loathing and the, the very dark feelings that are pulled into place by a breakup. After this track, though, my love for this album starts to kind of wane. The very crowdy elements that Sinai brings to the table kind of comes into play on the next track, Shitty City, and I guess I wasn't that big of a fan of them. I usually like this style of music, but to hear Spencer kind of singing over it with the same dramatic pauses that he puts on a lot of these tracks didn't really add much to the momentum of the song for me. Spencer kind of goes back to the drama of the first two tracks with the next song, Quick Fire, I Tried, but but at that point, I kind of felt like he was just throwing the same idea out there he, he already had. The song, to me, felt a bit repetitive too, just not that engaging. Same thing with the track Far Away Lighting. The track Headed for the Door, one of the first singles from this LP, is pretty slow, but it has a lot of suspense, I would say, and the, and the explosions of synthesizer on the track too are pretty good as well. The story is okay. Some of the rhymes, door and gore, are not really doing it for me. I kind of feel like the story is being guided by whatever Spencer can rhyme with the word door. But I did like the last track on here though. But pretty much for the same heavy and dramatic reasons that I like the first two tracks. Overall, I kind of felt like this album was, was big on emotion, but kind of small when it came to detail. And in variation too, I feel like the more kraut rock elements that Sinai brings to the table were the only real points of, of difference. Plus this LP doesn't really bring a lot of the very out there lyricism that I usually expect from Spencer. However, a lot of songs on here do bring a really clear and, and personal story. So clear and personal that, that I felt as if I was kind of bearing the burden with Spencer as I listened to at least some of these tracks. This is a very likable album, but I didn't really come close to loving it. I still kind of feel like Moonface has a lot of growing to do, and while the story on this album kind of proves to be a very important chapter for Spencer, personally, it doesn't really feel like an important chapter musically. I'm kind of feeling a strong six to a life seven on this thing, but what did you guys think about it? No, really. What did you think about this? You heard it and you have thoughts as a result of this. What were they? Positive? Negative? Why? And what should I re review next? Anthony Fantano, Moonface, forever.